Make you give him a lot of love. Let's clap it up for the Woo! very funny Dave Colombo! Good to see you. Oh my goodness. Thank you for coming out tonight. We really do appreciate it. It's it's not easy to go out anymore, is it? Like remember when you were a kid and like being sent to your room was like a punishment? Mm -hmm. That's the dream now. <laughs> like are you kidding me? Like sometimes like I'll have a thing that I have to do and part of me's like, can I pull my mom and dad out of retirement? <laughs> Just ground me one more time. You know? Sorry he can't come to your baby shower. He needs to think about what he's done. <laughs> Feels good. Um, hope you're all having a good day. I am not having a good day. Uh, I had to listen to my wife complain about her bad haircut. <laughs> I was like, honey, read the room. <laughs> um, you have any idea how much I wish a barber accidentally gave me bangs? <laughs> it's just, it sucks that we're not in the body positivity movement, you know? Like, it'd be nice if I could just be like, excuse me, I'm not bald, my forehead is living its truth. <laughs> that, would be, that would be nice, I would like that very much. That would be delightful. I know there's like ointments and creams and medications I can take to get it back, but that just seems desperate, you know? Because like, think about it, you and your hair are dating. And if it says, I'll only stay if you give me drugs, that's a toxic relationship. You know? <laughs> Gotta get out of there. Sometimes I do some acting and it's fun to go bald as an actor because as my hair gets further from my forehead, the roles I get cast in get further from the plot. <laughs> Back when I had hair, I would get lines like, Ooh, are you ready to fall in love? But now it's like, are you ready to order? <laughs> I studied theater in college. That means I have great breath control when I ask my dad for money. <laughs> Slow burn on that one. Here's the thing. I'm not saying that being a theater major was a waste of time, but it is hard to talk to anybody who had a real major. Anybody who, you know, like, oh, you passed the bar? Cool, I had to lie on the floor and be a pond. Like, what, am I, what am I even supposed to say? Uh, I'm a big old nerd. Uh, I once made a Ghostbusters uniform for a costume contest that was so detailed, the judge said, and I quote, you didn't need to do all that. <laughs> That's how much of a nerd I am. I still play video games. People are like, why do you play video games? Because leveling up in games is better than leveling up in life. You know, <laughs> Video games are like, you've you know, passed the dungeon. You survived the dungeon. You've unlocked the double jump. Life is like, you survived your family, you've unlocked therapy, you know? It's a little different. No, but I take it seriously being a nerd. Like, I will walk right up to the Times Square Spider-Man and go, you know, eating a churro with your mask off is disrespectful to the source material. I go hard, you know? And I know that energy is a lot for some people. You know, I get it. But that's why I'm jealous of sports fans, because they get to, you know, they get to just wear it, you know, like, yeah, you know? It's a different vibe. Like, I'm jealous of that. They can just, like, they can, they can pretend to be on the team. They just walk around with a football. We made the playoffs! Imagine if I walked around with a comic book. We beat Thanos! <laughs> It's not fair, you know? Because if you think about it, we're the same. Like, I always want to tell sports fans, like, you're wearing a jersey with your favorite player's name on it. I hate to tell you, that's cosplay, man. <laughs> I'm, I'll see you at Comic-Con. <laughs> like, gonna make fun of Dungeons and Dragons when you <laughs> play something called a Fantasy League? Come on. <laughs> We're, we're way similar, like we really are. Like we, we both love our franchises and support them even when they're not doing well. Like I walk out of X-Men movies like a Mets fan. <laughs> you see me at the AMC, I'm like, good hustle, good hustle. <laughs> Get him next time. <laughs> it's okay, this is a transition year. <laughs> The reason I, I don't watch sports is because, you know, there's just, like, if you, I know this is, like, blasphemy, but there really is no reason to cheer for a team. Like, I'm watching the NFL, I'm like, they're not really from Miami, they're not really Dolphins, what am I watching, you know? <laughs> More people would watch sports if the teams actually had something in common. 
Like if the NFL was like, tonight, the Florida anti-vaxxers. <laughs> Take on the New York preferred pronouns. <laughs> I don't care who you are, everybody in this room is like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I gotta see, I paint my face and go, let's go. Still no score as the LA vegans refuse to touch the pigskin. And the Memphis flat earthers refuse to call it a ball. And thank you, that's my smartest joke, I appreciate you laughing for that, I appreciate that. Some, some people like don't laugh at that, so I'm like, I'll do a palate cleanser and do my dumbest joke, all right? My friend said everybody loves quilts. I was like, that's a blanket statement. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm married. I love her. She's the best thing that's ever happened to my credit score. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm with her, because I, I got married late in life, and it was time, you know, like... And it was good, because I think... As you're getting older, what you're looking for in a woman changes. Like in my teens, I was a boob guy. In my 20s, I was a butt man. Then in my 30s, I really liked women who didn't turn my sister against me. Some of you didn't laugh, some of you were like, yeah, yeah, I feel that. Like, I had that exact experience. You know. Could never do anything. Like, online dating never really worked for me. Like, no, no one wanted to take three trains to my place in Brooklyn. <laughs> Even though that you all said on your profile you love to travel. <laughs> And even when I could go on dates, it never really like felt good. It never it was never because I was dating in my thirties, which is horrific. You ever see two people dating in their thirties? There's nothing less exciting than two people who know who they are. <laughs> it's not a date. You're just trading war stories, like you're <laughs> trying to one up each other. Like you turn your ex into an alcoholic. Cool. <laughs> Mine beat cancer, but still said loving me is the hardest thing she's ever done. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's a race. I'm not saying it's a race. It gets real. Like that's my point. It gets real. Like a date in your twenties is like a beer commercial. It's like, where's the night gonna take us? In your thirties, it's like a drug commercial. It's like, I may not be right for you. <laughs> Clinical tests have proven exposure can cause dizziness, dry mouth. <laughs> I fear commitment, so don't date me if you're pregnant or plan to become pregnant. <laughs> as hard as dating is now, though, like, we do have to admit that it, it is way better than it used to be. Do you ever read, like, Pride and Prejudice and books like that? You, you ever see what dating used to be like? Just like old man interrupts woman on her walk, you know? <laughs> you know I fancy you, Corinne! Like, whoa! Like, he's, like, <laughs> She's just like, you know, like making a list like, con, creepiest man I've ever met. Pro, only man I've ever met. And I guess we're getting married. <laughs> That's why weddings started to do that. Like, you know, if anyone knows why these two shouldn't be wed, speak now. Because it's literally crowdsourcing. Does anyone know anything about these two? <laughs> That's why it's weird that we still do it, though. Like, you ever be at a wedding now where they're like, you know, if anyone knows why these two shouldn't be wed, don't we all, like, look around? We're like, ask them. Yeah. They, they've been living together for six years. We put on the uncomfortable shoes. We got the Airbnb. We're here for the cake. You know? Come on. It's the only ritual like that where we just stop and go, was this a bad idea? <laughs> you know, there's no verse in the happy birthday song that's like, did he deserve another year? <laughs> Should we end him right now? <laughs> it's not the time to ask. Like, don't even, why, why are you even asking that now? It doesn't make sense, you know, like. I just think that, like, instead, like, if you wanted to find out if this was a bad idea, you could have put it in the wedding invitations. You know, like, box one for chicken, box two for fish, box three if the groom is still into crypto. <laughs> but I'm with my wife, and I, I love her. And I'm, I'm glad, because, like, we're very similar. We have similar interests and everything, because sometimes you go out with somebody, and it's a very different energy. I went out with someone once, sat down, first date. The first thing she said was, I'm a Libra, what are you? And I was like pulling away emotionally. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's already been some talk about it, but for me, my thing with astrology is, do you ever notice that it always makes sense? 
I like to test them. I'm like, I'm a Leo. They're like, that makes sense. They're funny. I'm like, just kidding. I'm a Virgo. That makes sense. They're liars. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. To me, it just doesn't fit with like our progressive movement. Like we're, we live in such this world where it's like, love is love. Live your truth. You know, like gender is fluid. No, no labels. But also if you're born in May, gross. Like what? How does that really? If you don't think it's like a prejudice, read a horoscope in a Southern accent. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> You'll sound like a racist dad from the 50s, I swear. You stay away from Pisces. <laughs> it's just not a good mix, you understand? <laughs> Feel free to socialize, but don't date them. <laughs> like, oh, 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 oh. Geminis control the media. Like, okay, got it. <laughs> I just love the idea of someone coming in at the wrong time and just going like, this is not the right show. <laughs> like, I should pick up this one. I told that joke once and somebody was in the crowd and she met me afterwards and she was like, I'm going to turn you around on astrology. I'm going to make your chart. We're going to do it and you're going to see how true it is and it's going to be amazing. So she got all my information, like the date and time I was born. She made my whole thing where the moon was and everything. She made my chart and it's like, this is going to be exactly you. And the first line on it was, you treat women like a conquest. I think you know me pretty well by now. Nailed it, right? Like, <laughs> dude, that is so not me. When I was single, I didn't know how to talk to women. I would be like, what are you drinking? What? I didn't say anything. Like, <laughs> it's like the old flirting bail, you know? <laughs> like, what am I hoping for? Like, ooh, for someone with Alzheimer's, he looks great. You know? <laughs> no, it's not me. And, it's, and also, ladies, I just want to say, you, do, like, you don't need astrology for a reason not to date a man. Have you met us? We're terrible. Like, get to know us. There's a lot not to like. Not dating a man because of his sign is like not reading Mein Kampf because of the font. <laughs> I was hoping for more in a bookstore, but that's all right. I actually dated that woman for a while. I, tr I tried. I tried so hard to, you know, give into that spiritual vibe. And every time we would be intimate together afterwards, she would do a thing where she would hold out her hand and catch energy from the room <laughs> that she would channel without touching you as warmth into your body. Or to put it another way, she'd hold out her hand. <laughs> and then I'd do a little acting. <laughs> so she, do you feel it? I do, I feel it. <laughs> You're not the only one in this bedroom who can fake it. <laughs> I tried, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I wanted to be spiritual. I just, it's never really worked out for me. Like the one time I went to a psychic, she forgot we had an appointment. <laughs> She's like, you gonna tell me about the future? I had to tell you about noon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Maybe I'm just getting crotchety as I get older because I, I just turned 40, and it's just like <laughs> my friends are like, 40's the new 30." I'm like, I don't care. It's, <laughs> wake me up when ear hair is the new head hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not self-conscious about my hairline. It's what my wife says I scream in my sleep. <laughs> but I never, I never take care of myself. I never go to the doctor. And every time I say that, there's always like one friend who's like, yeah, it's a scam. <laughs> then I tell them how long it's been for me, and they're like, oh, no, you should go to a doctor. <laughs> And there's part of me that's like, I should exercise, I should get in shape, but then I'm like, I don't have any hair. Like, what's the point? Like, even if I get, like, like shredded, I'm not hot, I'm just the bald guy who could help you move. <laughs> you know, like, it's not the same. My big thing is fast food. I eat a lot of it, way too much. And it's always a thing where it's like, my wife, she's a very good cook, and she doesn't understand, like, the, the addiction of fast food. She'll still say things like, Dave, you don't need Burger King. I can do amazing things with cauliflower rice. <laughs> That's like me saying, we don't have to make love, I can do amazing things with a high five. <laughs> it's just not the same. I don't even take care of my mental health, I know that. I just, I, I, I'm not in therapy. Are we in therapy in the room? You guys, no? Nobody's in therapy? Awesome. In the back? That's cool. I can't ever go to therapy because my dad is a therapist. So I know firsthand they don't keep your sessions private. You guys were like, oh shit, I need to make a phone call. 
Yeah, when I was a kid, I'd be like, Dad, the dishwasher's broken. He's like, I'll tell you who's broken. I'm like, no, okay, <laughs> <laughs> he's also like aggressively Italian so I'm always like what is a therapy session with my dad like it must sound like a threat like you got a nice psyche it'd be a shame if something happened to it like what? Whoa, easy, easy. I don't know I love I love it it's it's people are weirded out when they find out my dad's a therapist and they're like you know so are you okay and I'm like I had the same childhood that anybody else had all the same nursery rhymes, Jack and Jill went up the hill because of their crippling social disorder. <laughs> Do you know the Muffin Man and does he know himself? <laughs> and of course, everybody's favorite, am I a little teapot or is that projection? <laughs> it's my other smart joke. <laughs> I do feel like I need to take care of myself because I want to I wanna be a part of the... Uh, the, the, like, I still try to connect to the young people when I can't do it. <laughs> Is it clap it up if you're over 35. Over 35 in the room? Okay, so, oh, it's such a thir over 35 clap. <laughs> so much, like, don't ask me to do anything. I, that is the most beautiful sound I've ever heard. It's like, I don't know what the lingo is anymore. Like, people start talking, and, you know, I'm doing my best, but they're just like, no cap, no sus, I've got riz. And I'm over here like, you know, I think there's an ointment for that. Like, I don't know. What, what do I mean? What do I do? It's going to happen to you, too, you young folks, you people who didn't barely clap. You guys, one day, and I want to be there, oh, for that first time that someone says the lingo that you don't understand, oh, and watch you have to wing it, oh. Some pimply 19-year-old just who's like, you know, Blitzkrieg flip-flop. And you're over there like, I hope you get your deposit back. I can't wait, that's what I want. I don't mind getting older. I do. I do think it's funny what to like, because some people do have a real hard time getting older. Like, uh, there's bands that I've been listening to for like 30 years, back when I was a kid. They're still making music, but they're still making music like they're 22. You ever hear this? Like, where it's like 50 year olds and they're just like, "I kiss Sarah in the boathouse." It's like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. You did not. Sarah is not in the boathouse. Sarah is a claims adjuster in Seattle with her same sex partner. <laughs> A decision she made after she kissed you in the boathouse. <laughs> you know, it's fine. It's fine if you still want to make music, but if you're 50, sing, f sing like you're 50. Tell us that story. <laughs> Colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> this thing on my arm is getting bigger. Like that'd be great. <laughs> I'm here for that. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like, you know, I also feel like it happens where I also just feel like I want to be in touch with, with the kids because I want to be a part of, like, the progressive movement. Like, I live in New York City, and it's a very progressive town, and I want to stay up on that. Like, the last time it snowed, I walked back to my car in New York, and I saw that someone wrote Black Lives Matter in my windshield in the snow. And I was like, I agree, but now everybody has to watch me wipe it off. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. I'm paranoid. Like I'm terrified. Like my 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 pronouns are he and him, and my adjectives are white and sorry. Like that's. My, see, that's it's you know. I don't want to appropriate any culture. When, when Ancestry told me that I'm 2% Ashkenazi, I'm like, great, I'll write 2% of a Jewish joke. <laughs> Check it out, this rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> but I like, I like living in a progressive town like New York City. It's beautiful. <laughs> They never, you know, uh, the, you're, you're never a New Yorker, no matter how, no matter what you do, you know. It's just like, it cracks me up because it's just like, there's no other place that that's like, you're not a New York. Like nobody else, get, nobody gatekeeps being a Floridian, you know. Like, <laughs> hey, oh, he swam with one manatee. He thinks he's from Boca. Like, no, like, don't make it <laughs> But New York, there's like this whole thing where it's like, I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm a New Yorker because I started calling the bodegas by their name. 
I'm like, honey, we need some milk. I'm gonna go to Cigarettes Coffee ATM. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, yeah, you're right. The prices are better at Deli Lotto Smoke. <laughs> There's something honest about that, you know, it's like, hey, no screwing around. Here's what's inside. I wish people were named like that. Dating would be easier, you know? Just walk up anxiety, bipolar, OCD. Hi. Hi, Mama's Boy, Night Terror, Psoriasis. Thank you all so much. Have a good night. Appreciate it.